We know that La Na'i was once home to at least 6,000 Hawaiians, while today our population is 3,000 and depends on weekly shipments of food and other resources. How is it possible for Hawaiians to thrive and live so sustainably? One answer lives here at Waia Opai, which means the freshwaters of Opai shrimp. We know that Hawaiians are very skilled and knowledgeable about ocean resources like shrimp, fish, seaweed, salt, and turtles, but they did not extract and deplete like we see in today's overfishing of our oceans. Instead, Hawaiians fed a large population by caring for and enriching resources in the environment. Aloha mai kako, Avelina i ka loko i a o Waia Opai. So here we are today at Waia Opai Fish Pond. It's on the eastern shore of Palawai Ahupua'a. Uh, Waia Opai can translate directly to mean fresh waters of opai or shrimp, um, which evokes an imagery of a freshwater spring of shrimp here. Uh, it originally was 2,000 feet of kuapa or rock wall that went all the way along to the other side that enclosed this fish pond and inside is about nine acres. This is Waia Opai, a local ia or fish pond made of dry stacked rocks. Using a combination of foundation stones, filler rocks, wedge stones, wall face rocks, and capstones, this wall allowed the flow of life-giving ocean water in ways that today's modern concrete would not allow. Chiefs and chiefesses would recruit the help of hundreds or even thousands of the community to work together and build this wall, producing resources for the entire community for years to come. The wall itself strategically designed and positioned sluice gates, or makaha, that allow for fresh water to wash in, bringing plankton, oxygen, and other resources that feed the ecosystem inside the fish pond. So right now we're standing in what is the Aowai of Waia'opai, and so Aowai is a channel that allows water to flow in and out of the fish pond, which is important in, for circulation of the water so it doesn't become stagnant. Um, so typically there would be a makaha, which is a sluice gate, um, typically made out of wood that allows uh, water to flow in and out, but also baby fish to enter. And as they grow bigger within the fish pond, they are unable to exit and then allowed um, whoever was living here uh, to collect them as needed. So there are typically five classifications of pohaku or stones that make up a kuapa, and so we'll go over them right now. So niho are typically the foundational bottom layer of the wall, and niho in Hawaiian means teeth, um, but these are typically the large uh, stones that are set on the ground, and they make up the foundation of the entire kuapa. They're typically large, and on top of those are stacked the face stones, which are called alo, so they make up the side of the wall. And if a alo doesn't fit well on top of uh, the rocks beneath it, you can wedge in an unu, so something like a smaller stone to make it um, flat on the side. The important thing when stacking rocks is that you want to make sure it's touching at least two other stones beneath it because it adds to the stability of the wall. And as you're building, you wanna go up at a very slight angle so that as the wave is hitting it, it's taking that energy and allowing it to flow through instead of just trying to um, combat the waves. So those are the three types of stones. The other two are um, also very important. So what's filled in, in the center of the kuapa, they're called pani haka haka. And so those can be small stones, they can be pieces of coral, pretty much any other type of irregular stone can be used to fill in the center. Um, and that allows waves to flow in and out as well, um, but while still um, not allowing 
huge wave action to enter the fish pond. Um, and the final type of stone is called pa palais. So some of you might recognize that word as something that is used to describe a hat. Um, so pa palais are kind of like the hats of the kua pa. They're typically flat stones that are set on top of the alo and on top of the pani haka haka to enclose it. And so um, Hawaiians were very smart at making sure that each part of the wall works together in a smart way so that um, it's not just the niho doing the job, but it's every part of the wall um, is important to making sure that it functions properly. Why does such an efficient system sit in disrepair today? In the 19th century, over 90% of Hawaiian population passed away, and many surviving Hawaiians lost rights to their lands, waters, and resources. Instead of working with their communities to care for resources, Hawaiians soon found themselves working in jobs for money, which they had to use to buy food. Since then, these fish ponds have fallen into disrepair, also ravaged by changes in our landscape. So here at Palawai, like we've seen at other ahupua'a across of our island of Lanai, um, the natural landscape has endured lots of changes over time. And so here in Palawai, uh, the introduction of different species like kiawe, invasive trees, um, and also different animals like feral ungulates have really changed the landscape down here on the shore. And so now we're seeing the effects of things like silt and different debris that wash along our coastline of Waia'opai. Um, and so why that's bad for our loco is that it changes the makeup of what's enclosed. And so silt now that fills our, our loco kua pa um, raises the temperature of the water. So it's not a, a friendly environment for fish, but also koa or coral is super important to a healthy loco environment. Um, and the silt comes in and washes over it and just basically suffocates it so it can't live inside. Um, and so those are some of the effects of the change of the landscape and erosion on our loco kua pa down here. So the fact that you are all participating in the 2020 Eikehoya Lanai is very special because before the restoration began in 2015, it was actually our 2014 Eikehoya Lanai students who came down to the site and began doing um, sedimentation mapping to see how much silt had built up. And so that is very important because we're able to track that information over time and to track our progress. And so the fact that we are now five years since the physical restoration of the Kuapa um, began in 2015 um, is very awesome because you can see that we've made quite a bit of progress. Um, while a 2,000 foot long Kuapa is a big undertaking, um, we have completed about 25% of it. And it is an ongoing um, project because sometimes the wall um, will fall down due to wave action and we need to rebuild it. And so we hope that once we're all able to gather again that you'll come down with your Ohana and be able to help us rebuild Waiopai. Today, we work to restore this ingenious feat of engineering and environmental science. Early on, we found that even the meticulous engineering of dry stacking rocks was harder than it seems, but our community is coming together and finding new ways to support the revitalization of this place. <laughs>